I've been exploring the difference between what it is to be nice and what it is to be kind. And so um, there are different, I think, ways to define these, but how I'm looking at kindness is um, uh, authenticness, um, considerate, someone that's warm-hearted, and compassionate, wanting others to be free of suffering. And comparing this to um, the niceness that is more agreeable and pleasant, likable and charming, but can be a bit more um, superficial and um, less wholehearted. And so I've been exploring this because I really noticed um, the tendency in myself to want to be kind and um, straightforward and um, really honest with others about what's going on with me, um, but often fall into this like more nice kind of habit of um, wanting to come across in a way that I think others will find me pleasant and agreeable and um, easy to be around. But we often talk about the kindness of our teachers, how that comes across in one way is that they point out our faults, that this great kindness and compassion that they have for us helps us see where we can improve in our practice and really grow as people. And so I've been noticing, um, yeah, that this, this habit of mine to be nice is really wrapped up in my own self-concern of, um, you know, those, uh, those eight worldly concerns, wanting praise and approval, um, wanting others to like me, um, uh, I think a fear of conflict that's, you know, just been present as long as I can remember, um, fear of saying something the other person doesn't really want to hear, and then being met with disapproval or criticism or pushback, um, and then like fear of judgment or being misunderstood, like I think I can have a good motivation, um, but then what happens if they don't get me and then they get mad and then it comes back to me, then I'm unhappy. Um, so when looking at times when I've had my faults pointed out to me, um, I see that sometimes um, folks are really I'm able to get through to me and really effective in that communication, and sometimes it's not so effective. Um, and I, I do these actual same things. Um, some of the ineffective ways of um, sharing, um, sharing my faults that I notice is when it comes across to me as um, kind of judgmental or angry, um, someone speaking in a way that I deem as harsh, then I have a harder time listening and hearing that. Um, and kind of on the opposite side, when someone is uh, so nice that maybe they ask these kind of questions that, you know, circle around things, but that they don't really follow up and, you know, get to the point of what they're looking for, then it's also easy, too, for me to discount what they're trying to tell me and be like, oh, yeah, they also don't really know what they're talking about, or I can be so clueless even to not even know what they're trying to get at and, um, and reach, reach out to me with. Um, and so how to find this middle way between not, um, not being so nice that it's kind of fake and not getting to the point of things, and also not coming from a place of anger and irritation, and that's why I want to talk to you about your faults, because they're irritating to me, because then it really comes back again to all about me. So looking at my motivation has, is really um, key here, and one thing that's been so helpful here at the Abbey is that we are encouraged to kind of keep our mouth shut for a little while and um, sit with when we are irritated or when we think that someone else is the problem to really examine what is it in my own mind that that button is getting pushed. And then also um, looking at it through the lens of renunciation, which is um, really renouncing the suffering that I can see that my attachment to praise and approval brings to me. 
because it's harder to really feel connected with others when I'm so self-centered on my own um, experience. Um, renouncing the suffering that my expectations can bring of, of what myself or others can show up with. And, um, and renouncing the suffering that my anger and irritation can lead to. Like, is there something that really needs to change outside of me? Or is there a way to shift my view of the situation? And I recently attended some teachings online with Venerable Tenzin Priyadarshi, and he was teaching on the three principal aspects of the path. And the, the first two, the first is renunciation, and the second is bodhicitta. And typically, I've heard them kind of presented in this way where, you know, first we develop renunciation, and then we develop the bodhicitta because we are, we know really clearly what we're trying to be free from and see the suffering that we experience ourselves and want others to be free from that suffering too, so the bodhicitta grows. Um, but Venerable Tenzin Priyadarshi um, really presented them much more in tandem with each other and how our bodhicitta aspiration really supports this renunciation and wanting to be, um, wanting to be free from the suffering and, and having that show up in a way that is this really open-hearted, this equal open-heartedness towards others, where it's not this renunciation, this detached kind of, um, I'm gonna tell you what I think and I don't really care what you, how you respond, this you know, kind of, um, yeah, this detachment, this um, the aversion to things that I think can get associated with renunciation where we're not necessarily pushing away, but instead we are cultivating this open-hearted equanimity that really reaches out to others um, without the grasping and the clinging. And um, he, he presented this in a way, yeah, that it just really inspires me to look at the idea of being nice versus being kind to put that in that framework of bodhicitta and through working with my attachment to praise or criticism is actually how I can show up and be of benefit to others because I'm just not so all about me and can care what someone else is going through and can be more curious and open as to um, what kind of support might be helpful or just why, why the situation is happening. And then another way that I am working with this um, cultivating kindness and the kind of the courage to, to share things and um, ask for things when they're, it's appropriate is to um, look at others through the eyes of kindness. That when folks have shared um, advice and feedback with me and I've been able to hear it, it's, I would say often, but I actually can't think of an example when this isn't the case. So I'll say that it's always come from um, a place where there's this established relationship of trust. And that this doesn't happen automatically or quickly. Um, and, and can be really, it's this process, it's the, you know, this bumpy process of um, engaging with folks and getting to know people, that there's no, no recipe for how to develop that trusting relationship. But one thing that really helps me um, from my own side is to see others through the kindness that they're bringing into their day. And so to notice not the, you know, the times when, you know, maybe someone, you know, I'm thinking it's like, you know, the, the most, it's like the trivial things that sometimes push my buttons, maybe often push my buttons. And that's what my mind can focus on and get really wrapped up in. But instead to train to really see it, it, even the, the tr trivial small things like, um, 
Well, I can use the water pitcher example in two ways. One is, you know, the person who fills up the water pitcher um, for the tea, and I can really, uh, you know, just appreciate and see the, through that ki those eyes of kindness. And then also not to get so wrapped up if someone just leaves a water pitcher empty, you know, and doesn't fill it up. But to more focus on the the kindness that people are doing and the the ways that we are kind of constantly supporting each other, even with like doing dishes every day, that every time I go into the kitchen and, you know, there's a meal to be served, someone washed those dishes, you know, probably the day before, because we kind of use similar dishes each day. And so when my mind is focusing on these, you know, small little grumbly things, instead to shift to seeing the ways that we support each other and seeing others through the eyes of a more kind attitude. Because that way, you know, when I want or need some help, I feel more comfortable asking for that. Like, um, sometimes I think part of the niceness is also this attitude of like, I can do everything myself. I don't want to bother others because everyone's very full with things that we're doing. And so I can, um, you know, not ask for help when really things are too heavy or I need four hands or there's multiple trips. But really the, this kindness is to um, provide, you know, as many people as needed the opportunity to contribute to whatever is going on. And when I am looking at folks with this more open-hearted attitude, you know, kind of on a more daily basis, then it's like, it's just easier for me to reach out and ask for that help instead of the, you know, the niceness that's like, oh, no, 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 I got this. Don't worry, you go drink your tea or whatever. Because um, that attitude, like I said, it's this more superficial thing that then there's some, a little bit more resentment, like, even though I'm not the one, I, I didn't reach out and ask for help when I needed it, then I'm angry when someone else didn't help me. And so this, yeah, working with this tendency in my own mind, I noticed to, um, to, be, to be more superficial and nice instead of really having that courage to... Um, to either reach out and offer some advice if I think that's appropriate or, you know, asking for help um, when I think that someone is busy and maybe they don't want to help me. And being open to the, to the response that I get too, I think is a really important part so that it really is a request and not a demand. And um, if someone says, no, I'm busy, um, like I just said to Venable Seppel a few minutes ago when she asked for something, um, that yeah, that I can hear that no and accept that too and ask someone else for help. Um, I see this, yeah, coming up multiple times in the kitchen. It's a, there's a, it's a place with many multiple, many moving parts. And we have a, a kitchen team that is essential in making our kitchen work. And everyone has their different roles. And so sometimes I will notice myself, you know, just taking on the role a little bit when I see that it's not getting done. But then really seeing that it's a kindness to ask others whether they're able to do it or whether maybe they need some support. But that outreach is its how we function all together instead of um, my attitude of just like smiling and saying it's all fine when it's better together. <laughs> And so this is a, a continuing exploration for me. I really noticed that the more I um, dig into this, you know, kindness versus niceness, um, there are many layers and still many parts of my own mind that I don't quite understand why this is so kind of habitual and automatic. And I um, am excited to continue to... Um, work with it and respond to things and practice responding in different ways. And it's this beautiful thing about, um, yeah, the Buddhist teachings is he really, really encourages us to question these thoughts and these assumptions of what we think is the right way to do things. And um, this is a wonderful um, 
community to get to practice that in because we are often met with tremendous kindness from those around us and um, and at least maybe and at least niceness and the kindness maybe is hard to muster. Um, so I don't think I'm alone in um, perhaps working with this niceness and um, kindness uh, dichotomy and hopefully together we'll all cultivate more of this kindness that really um, wishes ourselves to be free of the suffering that our afflictions and our self-centeredness brings, and from there can help others also see ways to um, work with those afflictions and be able to really show up and be present for others as we um, offer support and uh, whatever is appropriate.